Physical education is important for the health and well-being of people of all ages. It is enjoyable, builds self-confidence and improves one's health and fitness. Specific sports skills are developed in individual as well as team sports. Students experience a variety of lifetime and recreational activities. Students who are visually impaired also need to experience physical activity. The student with visual impairment should experience a program designed to improve their fitness levels by participating in various games, activities and exercises. Some students may have developed poor circulation, limited lung capacity, poor muscle tone, poor posture and a tendency to become overweight. A regular physical activity program will improve fitness and give the student confidence to move through space without instructions. It can also develop motor skills needed for daily living and mobility. Physical activity plays an important role in the academic success of students and the quality of life of children, families and communities. Physical education contributes to enhancing physical activity among all students. The practice of adapted physical education is predicated on the belief that each student has the ability and a desire to move to be active and to participate meaningfully with peers. All students including those with disabilities should experience a quality physical education program that meets their individual needs and provides them the opportunity to reach their maximum potential. Participation and activity are necessary components of physical, emotional, intellectual and social health. Health affects educational outcomes behaviors and attitudes. The attainment of educational and personal goals is dependent on the achievement of good health. Adapted physical education is vitally important to the quality of life for students with visual impairment. Providing safe and successful experiences and meeting the unique needs of students with visual impairment through physical education will enhance self-actualization including the development of abilities in the psychomotor, cognitive and affective domains. The need and importance of physical activities for children with visual impairment. Before going to see the adaptations, it is very important to know why we have to adapt physical activities for children with visual impairment. Decrease in mobility and motor skills puts visually impaired children at a health risk of obesity. Lack of mobility reduces motivation to participate in physical activity which in turn reduces physical fitness. In addition, isolation from peers and lower social interaction means that play occurs much less frequently. Studies have suggested that people with visual impairment have in general much lower levels of physical fitness than their sighted counterparts. This lack of physical activity can lead to not only obesity but also muscle weakness and low cardiovascular endurance. The problem of obesity is particularly serious. Being overweight increases the risk of developing several other serious medical conditions such as osteoarthritis, diabetes, heart disease and even certain types of cancer. In addition to a health diet, one of the most effective and most accessible ways to prevent obesity is engaging in frequent physical activity. It is imperative that children be given opportunity to be active. It is the role of parents and educators to provide this opportunity. Excluding visually impaired people from physical activity puts them at significant risk for serious medical complications in the long term. Moreover, Excluding children from physical activity makes it much less likely that they will develop active habits later in life, putting them at even greater risk. Aside from the health benefits, the advantages of athletic activity are numerous. Physical activities 
allow children to master basic motor skills and lay a further foundation for complex motor development. Activities lead to increase cardiovascular endurance, balance and overall coordination. Over time muscular strength, flexibility and range of motion will improve. The child can gain special orientation through exercise. Until children become oriented, they display tentative movements. Physical training teaches people with visual impairment how to use other senses, hearing and touch to orient themselves. In addition to physical benefits, there are emotional benefits. Like all children, children with visual impairment experience a range of emotions. They can be seen as selfish, impatient and subject to temper tantrums. Learning to work with others as a partners is a good release for children. Their self-awareness and self-confidence increase as they use their imagination in games and learn to express themselves. Intellectual benefits can be seen in the strategy and teamwork skills. Also, there is improved observation, listening skills, memory, concentration and decision making. Sports have numerous social benefits. Children can connect with one another for a sense of belonging and community. Groups allow for mutual respect and cooperation which develops an increased appreciation for diversity. Finally, physical activity positively influences many other aspects of children with visual impairment. Poor posture is relatively common among blind children who have no way to observe to the carriage of adults. Physical activity can help to improve posture. Congenitally blind people have a tendency to develop stereotypical behavior known as blindisms. Example of blindisms are rocking back and forth, rubbing one's eyes with one's fist or fingers and other socially unaccepted behaviors. Having an outlet for physical movement, participating in regular physical activity can help to reduce blindisms. In addition to these benefits, being physically active carries with it the same benefits for blind children as it does for all children. Improved metabolism, reduced risk of developing heart conditions, stronger immune system and endurance. All of these things can be achieved with regular exercise. Barriers to physical activity for children with visual impairment. Unfortunately, there are some difficulties in creating and abiding by a plan of physical activity for children with visual impairment. As might be expected, poor motor development early in life often leads to less capability and desire for mobility later in childhood. As such, it is imperative that barriers to physical activity in young children be identified and overcome. Often one of the largest obstacles to the continued physical education of visually impaired people comes from the most well-intentioned source, concerned parents. A recent survey conducted showed that many parents of visually impaired children perceive that the largest difficulty to providing their children with a physical education is the possibility of injury. This understandable overprotectiveness reduces the opportunity for children to participate in physical activity. Additionally, if the attitudes of the parents are negative towards physical activity, this negativity leads to decreased motivation for the child to engage in physical activity. An extension of this overprotectiveness, it has been shown that as the level of visual impairment increases, the parents' expectations for physical activity decreases. It is necessary that the expectations are kept high for children regardless of disability. If expectations are kept high and physical activity is made a priority, confidence, mobility and spatial awareness will increase facilitating further activity. Finally, a major barrier toward physical activity is the attitude of the peers of visually impaired children. There is a tendency for children with visual impairment to become isolated. Lack of education and experience in dealing with people with disabilities 
causes hesitation among sighted children to interact with their sightless peers. In addition, teasing and bullying are not uncommon phenomena and for children with visual impairment, the fear of being made fun of is the primary difficulty with engaging in physical activity. In order to overcome these obstacles, educational opportunities for the parents, classmates and even educators of visually impaired students must be prevalent. What is Adapted Physical Education? Adapted Physical Education means a specially designed program of developmental activities, games, sports and rhythms suited to the interests, capabilities and limitations of students with disabilities who may not safely or successfully engage in unrestricted participation in the activities of the regular physical education program. Adapted Physical Education is an individualized program of instruction created for students with disabilities that enables success in physical education. In the context of adapted physical education, adapt means to adjust or to fit modifications to meet the needs of students. Adapted physical education is a sub-discipline of physical education and encompasses the same components associated with physical education, providing safe personally satisfying and successful experiences for students of varying abilities. The curricular purposes of adapted physical education align with those of physical education. Adapted physical education should be diversified and include developmental and remedial activities. Adapted physical education is a direct service, not a related service. Adapted physical education services should include assessment and instruction by qualified personnel prepared to gather assessment data and provide physical education instruction for children and youth with disabilities and developmental delays. The benefits of adapted physical education It promotes physical activity as part of an active lifestyle, develops fundamental motor skills necessary for participation in sports with peers, helps to enhance self-esteem and self-image. Adapted physical education increases physical independence, self-help skills or skills that promote independence, self-sufficiency and mobility, decreases the health-related complications. It develops appropriate motor skills that allow the child to play and participate in an educational environment with typically developing peers. Principles of Adaptation The following represents tried and true principles when considering the need for and types of adaptations necessary to assure that individuals with visual impairment are given every opportunity to have equal access to and benefit from their participation in physical activities. The first principle is adapt only when necessary. Many people with disabilities lead very independent lives and require very few additional accommodations and supports to participate in leisure activities and environments beyond those typically employed by most. Take the opportunity to review with prospective participants the nature of the activity and allow them to tell you, I can do this or I can't do that, here is what I need to assist me. Use this as a basis for discussing specific adaptations and other possible accommodations. Additionally, some providers fail to provide modified environments by limiting the choices and opportunities for people with disabilities. They never see people with disability in the physical education settings, thus assuming they aren't interested in participating. Consider this corollary, adapt when needed to increase a person's participation, success and enjoyment. The second principle is adapt on an individual basis. Be certain adaptations which are considered and designed for an activity are in fact relevant for a particular participant. Often times recreation programs purchase modified or specialized equipment, for example beeping balls for persons who are blind or higher extra staff 
in anticipation and assumption of its need by prospective participants with disabilities. It's good to be prepared. However, these can be costly additions and as such, programmers want to justify the expense by assuring its use whether it is totally necessary or not. In addition, stereotypes and attitudes about certain types of disabilities create a mindset in programmers that certain adaptations are always needed. Conversely, make certain that activity adaptations and specialized equipment or acceptable alternatives is available when needed. Make them available when needed. The third principle is view any adaptations as temporary. Consider adaptations as transitional until the person can learn the skills and behaviors to participate in the standard or typical way. Some modifications like use of a cane, sighted assistant or assistive device may always be necessary. However, prevent children with visual impairment from becoming unnecessarily depend on these adaptations thereby further limiting future options and opportunities for this person to enjoy these activities in more inclusive settings. The next principle is adapt for congruence. Any adaptations or modifications should make sense not only for the person using them but to others observing their use. Unique or exaggerated adaptations and modifications those which may not be usually seen or experienced by non-disabled participants may have an unintended consequence of further limiting the inclusion and acceptance of the person with a disability. They may just seem too weird or more importantly too youngsters unfair. In fact, they help reinforce stereotypes about disability and underscore how different these people are. The fifth principle is adapt for availability. Adaptive equipment, materials and support provided in one physical education environment may not be readily available in another comparable environment. Consideration should be given to assuring that materials and services, for example activity aids, purchased are in so specialized that the participant using these adaptations don't have their options and opportunities limited to using them in only one setting. In addition, several companies sell specialized equipment especially marketed to the disability community. Unfortunately, because of the specialization in both types of material as well as the target customer, these products are quite expensive and difficult to obtain. The average person may not be able to purchase these materials. Program planners should keep these issues in mind when suggesting and designing adaptations. If children learn how to play a game or sport using modified equipment at the neighborhood center, parents should be able to purchase these same games and sports materials at local discount retailers plus have the know-how to modify them if necessary. Specific strategies for students with visual impairment in adapted physical education. Review the student's functional vision evaluation or meet with the educational counselor to determine the student's degree of visual impairment and the amount of residual vision available to the student. Ask the students what they are able to see and which objects and conditions present problems and at what distance the object is visible. Allow students to position themselves where they are able to see the best. Make sure indoor areas are well lit. Check with the students. Sometimes dim light may be preferred. Use light colored equipment, preferably white, yellow or orange unless dark is needed to provide contrast. Allow a student with a visual impairment to explore the entire physical education area so he or she can become familiar with the area. Keep the instructional areas as uncluttered as possible. If major changes are made in the environment, the impaired student should be told 
and allowed to explore the new area. Modify activities and equipment where necessary, use audible bells, guide ropes for running and large equipment for the buddy system. Stand near the impaired student so that instruction can be seen and heard. Provide arm support if needed on jumping activities. Use touch to demonstrate body movements. Other adaptations. It is helpful to use your student's name before giving instructions. Use descriptive verbal instruction. Say what it is you are actually doing in body oriented language. For example, when teaching to hop, say stand on your left foot, raise your right foot and jump in the air on your left foot. Use directional words and landmarks in the playing area to direct a low vision student. For example, walk to the door, turn toward the window using a quarter turn. Use movement as a mode of learning, guide but do not over protect the student. Vision plays an important part of maintaining balance. A lack of vision affects movement and coordination of a visually impaired student. Use additional helpers if needed. Encourage students to work as independently as possible so they do not become over reliant on assistance. Break skills into small steps. Standard equipment can be adapted to meet the needs of children with visual impairment. Consider visually impaired students special needs in all planning. Seek support for specialist teachers, other teachers and organizations for the blind. Adaptations in development of fundamental skills and games. Go from less difficult to more difficult skills and break down skills into their component parts. For example, catching a ball, bounce the ball a short distance away, gradually increase the distance but eliminate the bounds, then increase the distance again. Limit playing space. This allows for greater involvement for the impaired child without greatly changing the experience for the sighted participants. Slow the action. Use a balloon instead of a ball. Use larger or smaller playing objects. They can be seen well by the student. Also, targets can be moved closer or made larger. Use proper lighting and color contrast. A ball can be taped with bright yellow tape to contrast with the floor and walls. Color tape can be used to mark the playing areas on the floor or walls. Boundaries. Change the floor's texture. For example, use of a rubber mat on the floor to mark space where exercises are done. Place a rubber carpet next to the wall so that child knows when he steps onto the changed surface that he has stepped out of bounds. The change in surface also signals a warning to the student that a wall or object is coming up so he needs to slow down and stop. Throwing and catching. Give the receiver a sound clue. Bounce the ball instead of throwing it directly. Use different types of balls to reduce the impact when hit with the ball. Balloons also show down the action. When throwing at a target, provide a sound like clapping or beeper behind the target. Striking and hitting, use a large ball and an oversized bat. Ball can be rolled on a table or the floor. Bells can be put inside the ball to be heard when rolled. Running. Partner assist by holding hands, use breast contact. That is, keeping touching hand, forearm, wrist or any part of the arm. A loop of a flexible piece of material can be held guide runner and the impaired student. Run to caller's voice for a short run. Students can run by self-holding onto a rope stretched between two points. Put tap on the rope at the end so the student can turn and return to the starting point in a shuttle run. Modify the environment. Use colored balls, mats, cones and goals. Safety precautions. Familiarize a student with visual impairment with any hazards. So student the safest routes to and from the various areas. 
always keep verbal contact with the student with visual impairment ensure safety rules are known and followed by all students try to ensure lighting conditions match the needs of the visually impaired student in unfamiliar surroundings student may be disoriented and lack confidence the teacher may need to establish an understanding of the activity and the safety precautions needed where necessary provide one to one or small group support alert student to the location of any obstacle such as goal post in open areas on floor and at head height bright sunlight or dark days may alter the student's visual functioning roles and responsibilities of the adapted physical educator the adapted physical educator has an important role in designing an individualized educational plan for student with disabilities so that they can participate to the fullest extent possible in school physical education typical roles and responsibilities of these adapted physical education specialist include providing direct services that is hands on teaching completing comprehensive motor assessments of individuals with disabilities and making specific program recommendations consulting with physical education and special education staff who are providing physical education instruction for individual with disabilities serving as an iep committee member who helps develop the iep in the psychomotor domain advocating for the student and parent coordinating the development of curricular materials interagency collaborations to meet the needs of individuals with disabilities and monitoring progress adaptation of yoga for individuals with visual impairment yoga is one of the six schools of ancient indian philosophy it is the practice that enables one to achieve higher levels of performance bringing out the hidden potentials from within systematic yoga practice will increase the physiological and psychological well-being visual disability affects their mental attitude they lack confidence and have a poor self image they develop feelings of inferiority from their awareness of their own abnormality and lack of success in all directions they are frustrated during to the inability to do simple things either not at all or with immense difficulty hence they are always highly tense and tired easily from physical effect the spine is stiff thus producing much pain which further limits movement imbalances coordination they also have difficulty in concentration benefits of yoga for people with visual impairments yoga an ancient indian exercise system is uniquely appropriate for people with visual impairments after learning some postures and stretches the yoga student can work alone at home or continue with a class coordination and gentle exercise for those people who are not very good at physical education activities yoga is a chance to start again and develop strength flexibility and balance stretching and range of motion many types of exercise stress strength training and result in bulking up of muscles yoga emphasizes stretching muscles and working to increase each individual's range of motion posture and body awareness as strength flexibility and balance increase as well as confidence posture may change old habits of movements are noticed and may change one's whole appearance may change one pointed awareness and body mind unity concentration on the breath and movements is a concrete experience in mental focus which can be generalized throughout all life experiences this mental focus can help a person learn to dismiss frivolous and insignificant thoughts when they surface and become a distraction relaxation and stress management the relaxation component of yoga introduces people with visual impairments to a whole new dimension people with visual impairments who travel in the community have to maintain a very high state of alertness whenever they travel they never can relax and travel automatically 
yoga helps one achieve a balanced state of mind a healthy body and work efficiency through concentration alertness and emotional stability and integrated series of balanced yoga poses increase body awareness strength and flexibility specialized breathing exercises and relaxation techniques improve concentration and reduce hyperactivity supportive and non competitive atmosphere in class yoga teachers make a conscious effort to create a supportive approach with each individual student there is no competition or comparison between class members one way to observe one's personal progress is to notice when one's former limits are being exceeded strategies for individuals with visual impairment in teaching yoga yoga postures are difficult enough with two good eyes tremendous focus determination and attention are necessary qualities of blind students and these qualities help make them sincere and alert practitioners it also takes more skill and planning for a teacher to teach yoga for visually impaired balance is a big concern for blind students other considerations include having a sense of reference to the surroundings and layout of the room and the student's position in that space relative to other students or objects take these students around the perimeter of the room showing and explaining the location of props or other landmarks this courtesy would help the students feel more at ease and more confident in their new surroundings assigning a special place in the room near a wall and having props already placed there would help them develop a greater sense of independence and self confidence this area should be easy for both the students and the teacher to access instructions to blind students as to any students should be clear concise and direct giving an overview of the pose and a sense of its direction tactile instruction or touching the students with accompanying verbal instruction may be helpful occasionally in the beginning it may help the students understanding and ability to work independently if you provide some personal instruction on how to do the poses and use wall support or other props establish names for the positions you are in prior to start moving into a posture every position needs a name for example long sitting feet somewhat apart move feet to one side and then to the other people who are born blind may need to learn the idea of the move the learning progression is to understand and do the move to move smoothly to coordinate the movement with the breathing to do the movement with the other side of the body or to the other direction and to do the movement very slowly explain moves explicitly avoid using left right unless they are necessary have each student determine his or her dominant hand and foot ask them to stand on their dominant foot let the student determine when it is time to switch to the other side ask them to do it the same number of times on each side or the same number of times in each direction for low vision students move near them and let them watch the postures to make it easier for them wear plain colored clothing with high contrast with the background for totally blind stand in front of them facing the same way they are have them feel you as you move with your verbalization as a backup move the student into position if they don't understand your directions to increase awareness of a move have the student feel his or her body as the move is made such as placing a hand to feel the arc at the waist then bend the knees up and feel the arc decrease as the back is flattened to conclude well planned physical education activities and yoga that utilize appropriate equipment will maximize a person's abilities and minimize any special challenges they may face adapting a game or activity increases the opportunity for fun skill development and self actualization learning a new physical activity or yoga improves the quality of a visually impaired person's life and creates a general sense of well-being and competence